Well, hello, this is Mr. Doro. Today we're going to be talking about electron configurations and orbital diagrams. By the time you get done, you should be able to, to draw these electron configurations and orbital diagrams for any element on the periodic table. Just a little reminder that we can find the location, the most probable location of any electron by using a set of quantum numbers, and those quantum numbers look like this. The first one is the principal quantum number. It's designated by the letter N. And it's kind of like if you think about the state that you live in, it's just a general area. The second one gets a little bit more detailed. It's like the city. It's called the orbital quantum number. That is a lowercase l, but it's kind of a cursive l, so that's why I hate to draw it in there. And then the street, uh, if you thought about that getting more detailed, that's the magnetic quantum number. That describes which orbital you're in. Even though this is the orbital, it really describes the sublevel. So this is major energy level, sublevel, orbital. And then this last one is the spin, which way the electron is spinning. And that is, if you thought of like the house number, it gets more and more detailed. So more broad to more detailed. You should have out your copy of the diagonal rule as we're going through this. This is the Aufbau principle, which says that the electrons will fill the lowest energy levels first. We would start right here, and we would go through this 1s energy level. Remember, the, the number in front is the major energy level. The letter, S, P, D, or F, is the sublevel. And then also there are orbitals within there in electrons in the orbitals. There are a maximum of two electrons per orbital. So that tells you how many orbitals each sublevel ha has. Look at how each of the S's can hold a maximum of two electrons. That means the, the S sublevel only has one orbital. The P's can all hold a maximum of six electrons, two per orbital. That means that the P sublevel could hold a max or has three orbitals in it. The D's have five orbitals, therefore they can hold a maximum of 10. And the F's have seven orbitals, therefore a maximum of 14. And so we have to fill the lowest energy levels first following these arrows on the diagonal rule. So now we're going to write an electron configuration for these two elements. And it's very easy to do. All we have to do is determine the number of electrons and then follow the Aufbau principle. So I'm going to look up iron on my periodic table. And on my periodic table, I see that iron's atomic number is 26. This has no charge written right up here, so I know it's an atom, which means that I have 26 electrons that I have to place. So I'm going to follow the Aufbau principle. And I'm going to start out with the first one that is 1s2. Now this 2 right here means 2 electrons that I placed out of the 26. I need to keep going until all of these little superscripts up here add up to 26. And so I keep going to the next level, which is 2s2. Now I have 4 electrons placed. There's 2 and there's 4. And then the next level is 2p, and I could put 6 of them there. you got to kind of keep on cruising here until you get to 26, and you could fly right by it if you don't pay attention. So 3s2, and then following my diagonal rule, 3p6, I'm looking over at my diagonal rule as I'm doing this. The next level is 4s2, not 3d10. You have to follow the diagonal rule. So now I'm going to count up these electrons. I've got 2, there's 4 total, that's another 6, that's 10, 12, 18, I've placed 20 of them. I've got 6 more to go. And my next level is 3d. Now it says 3d10, but that 10 is a maximum number of electrons that I can place, and I only need 6. So I'm going to put 3d6, and all those now will add up to 26. For zirconium, I'm going to do the same thing. Looking at the periodic table, it is the atomic number 40. This has no charge on it, so that means there are 40 electrons. And so I'm just going to start placing them till I hit my 40. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d. Now I need all 10 of those. And then after 3d10 comes 4p6, and then 5s2. And then, now if I add these up right here, 2, 4, let me put this on, 2, 4, there's 10, 12, 18, 20, uh, 30, 36, 38, and so I only need two more. My next level is the, after 5S, is 4D. I only need two more, so it's 4D2. Those are electron configurations. Orbital diagrams get a little bit trickier. They still follow the Aufbau principle, but they're a little bit more detailed than the electron configuration. We need a couple other rules. One of them is Hund's rule. Hund's rule says that electrons will fill on 
orbitals in a sublevel singly, that means one at a time, until they have to double up. This is also called the school bus rule, which is which relates to the fact that you get on the school bus and usually the seats fill up singly one person at a time until the next person gets on and all the seats have one person in, then they have to double up. Remember, that's only on a sub-level in, in an energy level. And then the Pauli exclusion says that only two electrons can go per orbital and they have to have opposite spin. Now we're going to try some. These are my same two samples that I had earlier for the electron configuration. So I know that there are 26 electrons in this one and 40 electrons in this one. Orbital diagrams, you have to, you still have to put the 1s and the 2s and so on and so forth, but you have to say how many orbitals are in each one. So I start way down low because we're going to increase every time we go up an energy level. The first energy level is the 1s, and s have one orbital. So I'm going to put one orbital right there. That dash line stands for an orbital. And now I'm going to put inside of there my electrons. I have 26 I have to place. I put them as little half arrows, one up and one down. And so then my next level is 2s. Notice I put it a little bit higher because it's a little higher energy level. It's still an S sublevel, so it only has one orbital there. And I can put this in, one up and one down. And then the, my next sublevel is 2P. Now the P's have three orbitals in them, so I'm going to draw three dashed lines. Now watch how I fill this one in, though. I'm, instead of just putting two in each one, I'm going to fill them singly, one at a time. Now I won't know in your finished work if you filled them singly, but I'll know at the end if you knew to fill them singly or not. So there are um, my number of electrons. I've got two, four, and then another six, and so that makes 10 so far. i got to get to 26, so I'm going to keep on going. And my next level is 3s. That's only an s, only has one orbital, so I'm going to fill those babies up. My next level is 3p. P's have three orbitals, and so I know I can fill those up too. And so now I placed, um, if you can count by twos, it makes it kind of easy. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. I've got eight more to go. My next sublevel is a 4s, and there, and I'm following the alphabet. principle here and so this is 4s there we go and now I've got only six more to go the next level is a 3d now D's have one two three four five orbitals and so I'm gonna fill these I only need six so I got to fill them one at a time all go in the same spin and then I go back and double up that is an orbital diagram for iron the last one I'm going to do right here is zirconium. Zirconium looks the same way, except it goes a little further. So I'm going to pause it. All right, so I've written out all my orbitals that the way that I'd like to see them. Notice I'm not writing, for example, on this 3D right here. I don't write 3D and then another 3D. I just write my 3D, and I have my five orbitals right there. I can see their five orbitals because the next level is up higher. The previous level is down lower. <laughs> so I fill these in. And I'm going to go one or one sub-level at a time. Then I fill my 2s, my 2p, one, fill them singly, and then come back and double up. Each arrow represents an electron, remember? My 3s, I fill that up. My 3p, fill them singly, and then come back. My 4s, my 3ds, and I come back here my four P's, my five S, and then, so let me count how many I have here, there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-six, thirty-eight. I have two more to go, and so my last two would go in these D's, and they fill singly with the same spin. Okay, now it's your turn to show me your stuff here. I want you to do an electron configuration and an orbital diagram for just these two right here. Make sure you have those done. Go back and check it out if you don't know how to do it. I don't accept it if you come and say, I don't understand how to do it. Just went through those, just how to do them. Get your diagonal rule out and follow that and have a great day. Bye-bye.